In California, dangerous waves are creating havoc along the Pacific coast to end the year. Powerful storms are turning up ocean water, bringing flooding and damaging structures near the water. Carter Evans reports on the high surf that's likely to continue for days. Scientists are issuing urgent, unmistakable warnings as California's coast enters a phase that seasoned experts struggle to define. A boundary where alarm gives way to outright fear and routine weather alerts dissolve into the language of emergency. Just moments ago, along the fractured edges of California's iconic shoreline, immense waves surged with unrelenting fury, slamming into cliffs, highways, and harbor barricades. Seawater, heavy with debris, swept over flood defenses and spilled into the hearts of communities long considered safe by virtue of elevation or artificial berms. The danger is not theoretical, it's unfolding now. As a powerful storm system delivers a barrage of rain across Southern California, the first major fronts have crashed ashore on Christmas Eve, a date traditionally marked by calm, now overshadowed by widespread flooding, evacuation orders, and the harrowing sound of land breaking apart beneath the ocean's onslaught. Residents gather at windows, powerless to stop entire sections of cliff as they disappear, swallowed by surf and dragged away fragment by fragment. Yet what's happening in California is more than just a collision of water and stone. Scientists, many of them veterans of decades spent tracking the state's shifting coastlines, report a jarring new pattern. This is not winter as California has known it. The coastline is failing at rates that surpass even the boldest predictions, with each incoming wave hurling both visible power and the haunting reminder that disaster is not just possible, but inescapable and accelerating. Roads collapse in seconds, landslides erase backyards and streets, and what was stable ground at dawn may be gone by nightfall. Within the relentless tempo of emergency alerts and news coverage, a disturbing certainty emerges. This is a turning point, a compound event marked by hazards stacking atop one another. Flooding, erosion, landslides, and failing infrastructure are no longer separate risks. They are now links in a chain that threatens to redraw the very boundary of California itself. With every surge, a more urgent question builds. If each new wave destroys what the last one spared, how much of the coast will be left by morning? But the threat doesn't end at the water's edge. Beneath the surface, deep in the very bedrock and stretching miles offshore, far more is happening than the eye can see. As waves demolish cliffsides and highways vanish with sickening speed, scientists warn that this is only the beginning of a much larger process. A transformation unfolding not across years, but within hours and minutes. How did California arrive at this moment of rapid, uncontrolled loss? What allowed the ocean to overrun defenses once seen as nearly invincible? And what, in scientific terms, is now pushing the coast toward the brink? The answer is not a single storm, but an extraordinary concurrence. Amplified Pacific wave energy, rare atmospheric disturbances, saturated ground, infrastructure strain, and the relentless upward press of sea level rise. California's coast now faces a violent alignment of hazardous forces, a compound event where every weakness is exposed, every assumption about safety upended. Alone, each of these factors might be manageable. Together, they produce a crisis that scientists view as an urgent warning for not just California, but for every coastline in an era of changing climate. Subscribe to follow the story as it unfolds, where every update brings new, critical developments. Don't just witness history, stay one step ahead of the next wave. Turn on notifications and never miss a vital alert as California's coast is tested like never before. The danger is not merely at the door, it's already inside, reshaping the boundaries of what we believed was possible. What happens when the land itself moves, when lines of safety vanish, when nature's power exceeds every defense? Are we witnessing a temporary disaster? or the beginning of a transformation that will leave the California coast forever changed. Scientists, including prominent coastal geologist Dr. Ye Ling Ma, point to a formidable, unprecedented reality. Multiple hazards intertwined. This is not a single event, but a cascade, a chain of destructive interactions where enormous ocean waves, saturated ground, surging rainfall, and the ceaseless Pacific form a continuous assault. With every surge, the threshold for catastrophe drops, and the landscape, 
literally begins to fall into the sea. Even as live bulletins track destruction in real time, the story runs deeper. The coast as Californians remember it is changing, and the very ground is no longer safe. In the darkness before dawn, as the Christmas Eve storm gathered force across the Pacific, automated coastal sensors, the silent sentinels of California's scientific community, began transmitting readings that alarmed even the most seasoned researchers. At Scripps Pier in La Jolla, where tides and waves have been recorded for generations, significant heights spiked well above normal, prompting a chain of emergency warnings from Arcata to Santa Monica. The pattern was clear and chilling, massive long period waves racing toward land, carrying extraordinary energy, breaking minutes apart. Rather than gradual rises, these waves struck repeatedly, overwhelming defenses and leaving scant time to recover before the next surge. Each wave tore away layers of sand, soil, and man-made berms, pushing water inland with devastating force. As the morning sun struggled through thick clouds, visible damage mounted. Highways designed to withstand the once-in-a-century storm failed within hours, with foundations undermined by constant wave battering and chronic saltwater seepage turning solid ground to unstable sludge. Seawalls, including Pacifica's iconic concrete barriers, thundered under attack, spray flying over rooftops and new alcoves carved into the rock. Scientists like Dr. Ye Ling Ma, reporting from a field station over overlooking battered bluffs, voiced the shock. This is no longer just water over the pier or edge erosion. These waves are shifting the land itself, transforming the supposedly permanent into ongoing collapse. The roar, she added, was explosive, a deep percussion unsettling homes, nerves, and the very sense of safety. Footage from helicopters and coastal drones confirmed the reality. Homes teetering on eroding bluffs, whole streets disappearing beneath tides, and scenes so violent and rapid they strain belief. In Newport Beach and Santa Cruz, places known for withstanding winter weather, lifeguards and first responders moved house to house, using boats to evacuate families as streets became rivers, boardwalks vanished, and parks submerged beneath foam. Meanwhile, inland areas were not spared. Rain lashed hills, and saturated soils already weakened by previous wet seasons and groundwater changes. Scientists warned that every drop contributed to destabilizing cliffs and hillsides, transforming local landslides into widespread threats along hundreds of miles of coastline. Beneath the sand and mud of California's beaches, another process compounds the drama above, subsidence, the gradual sinking of land. Dr. Ma's team reported, as we watch the waves, the ground is quietly moving down. In some places, it's millimeters each year. Combined with big storms, cliffs don't just erode, they can fail massively and without warning. In a notable instance, blocks of San Francisco's Marina District and marshland in Orange County recorded sudden drops in elevation, subsidence that allowed waves to sweep further than expected. Homes, classified as safe, abruptly found waves breaking at their doors. How can infrastructure designed for isolated threats withstand so many at once? The scale of change is breathtaking. Each hour, Coastlines recede, piers fracture, and harbors flood. California's shoreline is not just eroding, it is retreating. If you're following the story, subscribe now. Every comment supports urgent updates and the latest research as it unfolds. Let your friends and neighbors know the ground beneath us is shifting, and the crisis is not yet over. On Christmas morning, more than a million Californians wake to scenes reminiscent of disaster films. But this is reality, broadcast live and witnessed by exhausted emergency crews working through the night. Homes perched on Pacifica's bluffs, once the envy of the state for their ocean views, now teeter on the very edge. Their backyards transformed into raw cliffs, with land sliding away like sandcastles in a fast tide. Property once cherished for its location is reduced to splinters and debris, washed inland or left floating in debris-choked pools. 
harbors from Humboldt Bay to Newport Beach report flooding so extensive that rescue teams cannot keep up. Crews rush to reinforce sand berms, meant for worst-case storms, only to watch waves overtop and erase them within minutes. Emergency radio channels fill with repeated warnings. Evacuate low-lying zones, stay away from cliffs. Coast Guard teams accustomed to handling the unexpected confront the unprecedented. The flooding is like nothing we've seen. Streets, marked as low risk in recent maps, vanish underwater, requiring boats for rescue. Amid the chaos, quieter but more lasting threats develop beneath the surface. Dr. Ma's team's measurements reveal that behind the obvious destruction, the storm's energy accelerates the land's downward movement. The shock, she says, is that community foundations aren't just threatened by water, they're being remade by it, one irreversible inch at a time. Subsequent analysis by the Pacific Center for Ocean and Atmospheric Research, led by Dr. Lina Chang, traces the destructive origins of this event. Three days earlier, as the storm gathered deep in the Pacific, satellite data revealed extraordinary wind fields, producing powerful atmospheric pulses. These pulses, stacking one behind the other, unleashed waves that intensified as they crossed the ocean, building pressure until it was unleashed on the coast. When the first impact hit, rapid onset swells reached up to 70 feet, with offshore buoys recording rogue waves of exceptional size. By the time seawalls in San Francisco and Santa Cruz faced their first real test, water had already breached their highest design levels, cascading blocks into cities, overwhelming drains, and shutting down power. Aerial surveys, essential as roads became impassable, showed water carving new inlets, campgrounds erased, and formerly stable bluffs reduced to debris. Train lines and roads now end abruptly where land has vanished, walkways toppling high above the surf, while drone footage shows safety lines erased at a relentless pace. For years, California's focus has been on fortification, seawalls, levees, new mapping. Few plans accounted for what Dr. Ma's ongoing research now highlights. The land itself is softening, giving way faster than any structure can hold. Seismic sensors in coastal districts measure subtle but cumulative downward shifts undetectable to the naked eye, until a season of flooding and tidal violence exposes their significance. Floodplain maps become outdated by the week, erasing expectations and catching thousands off guard. Homes that once felt invulnerable, Dr. Marr explains, are now on the front line. Safety itself is a moving target. Real estate, infrastructure, whole towns are thrust into danger, not by policy, but by the realities of geology and tide. Compressed time-lapse imagery underscores the pace. Dunes flatten, Piers retreat, rivers carve through neighborhoods with every tide, and still the ocean advances. If you haven't already, subscribe for continuous coverage. Each lost block, each scientific bulletin, each evacuation shapes our collective understanding. Every moment matters before the next surge. Now attention turns to the mechanisms behind the disaster. The science of stacked threats. Dr. Lina Chang, atmospheric physicist, sums up the evidence as fresh waves roll past our screens. What's unique here is the scale and consistency of energy-making landfall. We're not watching isolated monster waves, but entire sets, each as strong or stronger, with intervals so short there's no reprieve for weakened cliffs and berms. Her research highlights a marine heat wave paralleling the coast, ocean temperatures rising, atmosphere energized, storms becoming more explosive, and waves supercharged well beyond normal patterns. Live streams from drones and buoys provide sobering images. In Half Moon Bay, neighborhoods are only reachable by boat. Retaining walls, once seen as guarantees, lie shattered. King tides, once rare, now compound the impact, catching planners, homeowners, and emergency crews with little warning. Topography seems to shift in real time under the punishing rhythm of the storms. But this coastal battle is only part of the story. From the east, rain-swollen rivers and saturated valleys bring a second, stealthier hazard. Dr. Marcus Ellery, lead geologist for the California Department of Water Resources, frames the new danger. We're in a feedback loop. The ocean pushes water inland, while rain and runoff pool at the shore, unable to drain. Levees, hillsides, even valleys are squeezed, and flood risk now stretches far beyond the coast into interior communities. Warnings are posted as inland towns enter emergency status. 
not for ocean flooding, but from rivers rising beneath their feet. Flash floods, debris flows, landslides begin where few expect, Ellery warns, even in places that never flooded in living memory. Traditional disaster boundaries begin to dissolve. These events aren't just about the coast. The crisis is everywhere. The sense of edge migrating into the heartland, up rivers, through low-lying neighborhoods, into towns never designed for water on all sides. By late afternoon, the challenge grows more complex. Power grids, already tested, sink under the load. Salt spray shorts lines. Transformers fail. Emergency communications go dark. Half a million households lose electricity, cut off from updates many depend on for safety. Lisa Mendoza, a veteran emergency manager, voices the growing challenge. Evacuation compliance is low, and not from apathy, but because people never got the warnings. No cell, no power, no internet. Responders revert to radio, door-to-door -door alerts, a race against both water and nightfall. As evening approaches, new crises multiply. Night does not pause the storm. Shelters overflow, families once again displaced. Volunteers struggle to keep pace with urgent needs. Along Highway 1, cracks widen, pavement drops, and crews count lost ground with early assessments showing repairs may take weeks or longer. The toll goes beyond buildings and roads. Every hour, scientific teams update their forecasts and maps, only to see them outpaced by real-world changes. The rate of destruction, Dr. Chang observes, defies linear explanation. It's accelerating. What was true at sunrise is obsolete by sunset. Within this relentless cycle, realization grows. These are not isolated events nor a simple episode to be fixed and forgotten. Dr. Ye Ling Ma and Dr. Lina Chang issue a joint warning to officials and leaders. The land we once knew is not the land we stand on now. Every storm draws a new map. Rebuilding can't mean repeating the past. Adaptation is a necessity and time is short. The cool is clear. Across California, in city halls, research centers, first response hubs, and temporary shelters, the message is urgent. Stay informed and prepared. Every decision shapes resilience against the next surge. As dusk settles on the battered coast, focus shifts from the losses to the future. What comes next when even experts acknowledge the era of quick fixes has ended? Night falls on a shoreline remolded by water, energy, and geology. Families gather in shelters, seeking updates and comfort. The hum of generators and the rumble of surf a constant reminders. The crisis is ongoing and the land is still changing. Even as scientists urge vigilance and adaptation, harder questions press beneath the surface. Will the next tide erase more than this one? Are we living through the irreversible transformation of California's storied coast? As you reflect on this night, remember, the margin for error shrinks daily. Every choice of preparedness, adaptation, awareness helps shape how communities will fare in storms yet to come. Stay safe, stay watchful. Subscribe for urgent updates. Share what you've witnessed, your concerns, and your hopes for the coast we all cherish. Continue following for new research and vital coverage as California's epic struggle with the advancing Pacific continues.